These are my benchtop power supplies. Uh, this one I built back in 1986. It has a Variac in it, plus the transformer from a 10 amp battery charger. This one is quite nice. It's the only one that's an actual power supply, but it only goes up to 250 milliampers. This one used to be a power supply for some big rack of equipment and it had the voltmeter and adjustable voltage and it added an ammeter to it plus a settable current limit, but uh, it's got a loud fan. And this is why I don't use it very much, but if I need to charge a car battery in a hurry, that's my go-to. But this one is my favorite. I built that one in 1987, but I broke it recently. And the feature of this one is it has no overcurrent protection, and I had the clips touching together, turned it on, and then didn't pay attention to it. And then a minute later, I noticed the power light wasn't on, and it's like, uh-oh. But it still puts out a little bit of voltage, so if I turn it on, I get a few volts on there, 2.6 volts. Oh, that's not doing too bad right now. But I can't trust it. Oh, there it goes. And now this light is all dim, and watch the voltage drop now. I inferred it must be the rectifier, so I ordered a new 25 amp rectifier, a breaker that it should have had all along, and a new capacitor for the filter. Because in all those videos about retro computers, people are always replacing the capacitors because they've gone bad, and the caps in this thing are older than most retro computers. What's cool about this one is I can also tap straight into the uh, AC transformer output, and let's look at the waveforms on that. And that's a nice sine wave. Let's crank it up a bit. And it's starting to hum loud now. And now those waveforms look a bit odd. Let's just turn down the voltage range. And turn that up a bit. And now those waveforms look like they're a little bit chopped at the top sometimes. Okay, now it's gone away. Oh, and now it's gone funny again. So something's gone funny there. I've already taken the screws out the bottom so I can just lift the cover up and we can see inside. And the date stamped on the transformer here is July 16th, 1951. And that transformer came from an old tube tester from the 1950s that my brother and I took apart at some point back in the 80s. Nobody ever thought that tubes would become cool again so tube testers were kind of worthless. And this transformer was for providing a different filament voltage for the vacuum tubes which is why it's got so many different voltage tops. And the rectifier is this thing right here, and it's the only semiconductor in the whole thing, and I'm pretty sure this is the problem. And I haven't got heatsink grease, so I'll just use some actual grease that'll hopefully help to conduct the heat away from that a bit better than just an air gap. So far it seems to be working. This is where it started to have problems before. Might be a bit much voltage for that meter. And beyond this level, it actually disconnects the uh, DC power part. So this seems to be working fine. And I'm curious about the malfunction of this rectifier now, so now I have it hooked up to the AC output of my power supply, but through this piece of wire, which is about a half a ohm resistance, so I can measure the current going into it. And I see some ripples there. There's nothing on the output, so there shouldn't be any current going into it at all. Let's crank up the voltage. Ah, seems to be okay now. Oh, there it goes. Lots of current now. And seems to be in just one direction, so I think one of the diodes in that rectifier is just going funny sometimes. Current's all gone again. Turn it up again. There it goes. And that is one volt per division, so each division is two amperes, so we're peaking at over eight amperes in the one direction. Best to toss that now, so I don't reuse it by accident. Now this meter can also measure capacitance. So let's check this capacitor here. 14 millifarads. Okay, so that's 14600 microfarads. And this one's rated at 15,000 microfarads, so I guess that's pretty close. And with this power supply turned off, the laser hooked up straight to the output capacitor. There's no regulation or anything. So let's see what it says about this one. I guess it's going to take a while. Oh, so 14.1 thousand microfarads. 
that's <laughs> almost the same as this thing. And looking in here, this is 4700 microfarads. And I assume the other two are the same size, which would get me to about this value. So maybe these are still good. But with old caps like that, sometimes the equivalent series resistance goes up. So let's check that. So I've got this big resistor hooked up. That'll draw about half an amp here. And if I turn that on, this is graphing the AC component of the voltage. 0.1 volt per division. And I also want an AC voltage reading. So let's turn that off and back on again to get out of the scope mode. And select AC. So 2.63 volts roughly on the AC. So now taking the AC output, running it through an external rectifier, same kind of rectifier. This capacitor, which is the same capacity as the ones inside, and the same load and measure. And it says zero. That can't be right. Come on. Okay. But no ripple voltage. That can't be that it's zero. Hmm. It can't be that low. Let's go into scope mode. And that looks like just like it did before. So I don't know why it wasn't picking up that AC voltage. Well, I just have to remember what this looks like. It's less than one division on here. Let's turn this off and I'll just leave all this stuff wired up, but I'll put my leads straight onto here. Plus and minus. And disconnect the cap. And let's try that again. And this is not updating. Oh, 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 oh. I need to run DC in here. And that looks the same, if anything, perhaps a bit less. It appears then that these capacitors are still perfectly good, even though they're probably about 40 years old. But I still want to move those around a bit so I have room to put the breaker somewhere in the back panel. So now common for the output goes straight to the breaker and then to the rectifier and to the AC output. So I'm protected on either one of those. So now connect to the DC output and a short. And the breaker popped. Let's go to AC. And that's dead now because the breaker's popped. Reset that breaker and short the AC. And breaker's popped again. DC is dropping because there's no supply on that anymore and reset that breaker. And I think that's a 6 amp breaker, but let's just try running a lot of DC current through there. This is in the 10 amp range. And just crank that up until we get some high amount of current. I'm also running it through this wire just so the current doesn't go up too quickly. So that's 5 amps now. 6 amperes. 7 amperes. Oh, and there the breaker went. Excellent. And what this switch does is actually selects between two different taps on the primary winding so to have essentially twice as many voltage steps. Originally this tube tester had a rheostat between the two extra taps on the winding so you could fine tune to adjust for fluctuation in line voltage because back then there was no voltage regulation. Not with tube stuff. Not in 1951. Well, I guess this repair is done so I can put this case back together. I was going to combine this repair with reviewing the scope meter, but this is turning out to be a super long video, so I'm splitting it off. I'll end this here and I'll review this one in another video shortly.